Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I wanted to remind you uh, that Link2, who's one of my sponsors, um, Link2's Joe and Doso tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Joe and Doso is going to be in um, Mr. Intuitive's Trumers Only live stream. He's going to be there to talk about Ripple IPO, what's next, um, and inside of this thing, it's going to be a bunch of people. John Deaton's going to be in there. Eleanor Terrett from Fox Business is going to be in there. I'm going to be in there. Digital Perspectives, Brad Combs, and then Linda Jones as well. Um, and, of course, the official cool guy will be in there. So it'll be kind of interesting. And I may, a lot of you don't know this, but when I do these, if when I have to listen to a Twitter Spaces or be in one, uh, in the evening like this and the cool guy doesn't know this either I don't think but when I do these uh, Twitter spaces it's at 7 at night my time and my son my 10 year or now he's 11 my 11 year old he likes to watch TV in the evening and he watches TV with me usually in the evening and so both he and his mother will probably be sitting here wondering how much longer I have to be in the spaces. This is, this is what I deal with. So, um, normally when I'm listening to these things, they are either, they either go in the other room because they're tired of waiting on me or whatever. But, but anyway, I'll be in there tonight at seven o'clock. Should be fun. Check this out. Uh, speaking of Ripple IPO and end of lawsuit, settlements, relisting, Ripple IPO can take XRP, to three and a three and a half dollars, which would be a new all-time high. Uh, well, I think close to it, to ten dollars. Top analyst. I don't know who top analyst is, but this is kind of what I. I mean, if if this lawsuit ends favorably, I think in the short to midterm, I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see something like that. But who knows? Who really knows? Um, but what's important is what will happen in the coming months after, because. If you get a favorable, as in favorable, as in XRP is not a security, then you're going to have institutions and all sorts of people that all of a sudden can play ball with XRP. That is really going to change the game. Now, John Deaton is experiencing what a lot of people are experiencing on in crypto Twitter, XRP Twitter right now. There's a lot of people that are out there, a lot of troublemakers and rabble rousers right now. I'm seeing a lot of that kind of stuff. I'm used to this. This always happens when the markets are down, especially when everybody's frustrated and waiting for the end of the lawsuit. This guy says, John Deaton, if the verdict goes against Ripple and the judge says XRP is a security, could we find that more XRP holders join the case, join the case that are cases that are suing Ripple in o Oakland, California, rather than waiting for appeal via Supreme Court decision around the year 2030? John says, if Ripple does, if Ripple loses to the SEC, there won't be any money collected for years, and only if Ripple loses on appeal. If the if the Supreme Court takes it on appeal, which I believe they will, if Congress hasn't acted by then, I believe Ripple hands down hands down wins with this 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 Supreme Court. If the SEC wins, Ripple will appeal, and the status quo that exists today will continue over the next two to five years. Assuming the SEC wins and the civil case lawyers get a win because the judge in California follows Judge Torres' ruling, Ripple will appeal that case as well and there will be no money for years, if ever. Five years from now, if Ripple loses all the appeals, the SEC would then collect the money, i.e. $1.3 billion, not the civil plaintiffs. The SEC would then offer a payback or a buyback a fund for XRP holders to sell their XRP. This is what happened in Vertasium. 
If I were the plaintiff's attorney in the civil case, I would want to, the SEC to lose because the SEC winning will gut the damages for all civil case. Ironically, if there was a recovery, XRP holders would get more money from the SEC fund because in the civil case, the lawyers will get between 25 and 35 percent of the recovery for attorney's fees before the cost of the case are deducted from the fund. Being on 75K list is actually a good thing because a massive putative class of XRP holders is easily identifiable. By joining the list, in fact, if there was even, if there was ever any money for XRP holders from the civil case for the SEC case or the SEC case, I'd likely be contacted because you have to give notice of the recovery to XRP holders and I'm in a position of possession of a list of 75K. You must ignore the morons out there who claim by joining the 75K list and arguing XRP isn't a security is a bad thing. If there is one day a month, if there is one day a monetary recovery for XRP holders, these morons have no idea what they're talking about. A person can believe that the asset they own isn't a security, but if that person is wrong because a judge in appellate court says otherwise, you don't get punished for being wrong. If there was a fund that allowed you to sell all sell your XRP to the SEC or back to Ripple because of a law, civil lawsuit, you would not be denied because you joined the list saying otherwise. Anyone who tells you different is an idiot. But the reality is that I doubt the civil case leads to anything. The SEC wins in the end. If the SEC wins in the end, it, it would collect the most money and offer the best option, ironically. Also, if Ripple loses and Congress fixes this regulatory mess, during the five years of appeals, it all goes away anyway. Bottom line, being on the list didn't waive anything, and if anything, it identified your claims if you have any long ago. John seems pretty pissed. I don't blame him. Check this out. Anthony Scaramucci, who was a big FDX guy, 38% of the national debt rolls over within two years. We will soon be spending more on debt service than defense. If you think that's scary, look at this. China is hiding $3 trillion of foreign currency in shadow reserves, adding unknown risk to the global economy, former Treasury Department official Brad Setzer says said. If China had $3 trillion in foreign currency shadow reserves, imagine the damage they could do to this economy. All right, we, we, uh, we told you the other day that the kid, Jack Maulers, who's a Bitcoin max, he was going to start his podcast. Here's a clip. He did his first podcast with Jack Dorsey. Look, I mean, Elon is obviously working on problems that he believes are beneficial to humanity, electric cars and um, uh, sending people to Mars and, and, uh, and, uh, and, now, and now Twitter. And I think Doge, in that sense, just give him the benefit of the doubt probably represents fun and diversion and some like people need to like stress relief and like jokes and i think that's more or less what it represents i i you know I, he has he, he's a believer in bitcoin obviously he you know he had his companies buy it he owns it I, I don't think he's ever personally sold his bitcoin i think he was fairly early in it um i think he understands the principles of it i think he follows some of those principles in his companies um, but he has questions about it around the speed. I don't think he was fully aware of lightning and, and layer two approaches. Uh, I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, the, in various phases, there's a lot of hype around all these things. And um, I think he's attracted to something that feels more whimsical and fun and whatnot. Um, that said, like, I, I, I do think that distraction is is dangerous. Like I, I think people lose money um, because of what he says and you know um, his excitement. They buy into something like Dogecoin, and um, the next day it like you know falls. And I don't believe it has any real fundamentals. I mean, it was literally started as a joke. And um, if you're not treating it as as that and as a diversion, then mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, there's there's issues there. For the rest of so. Let me tell you, so he thinks it's irresponsible for Elon Musk to be talking about Dogecoin. Well, I think it's irresponsible
for Jack Dorsey and Jack Maulers to be pushing Bitcoin when Homeland Security has said that they've met with the four Satoshis and all these guys are pretending like they don't know. Somebody knows. Why aren't they? Uh, I mean, you want to talk about responsibility. Where are they calling for the Homeland Security to tell us who the four Satoshis are? I think that's way more irresponsible because there's a lot more people's money on the line with Bitcoin. Speaking of irresponsible, Tether Holdings has been show, shown Tether Holdings has been shown to hold securities from Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, whose chairman and executive director Chen, however you say that, is ex-head of Bank of China, who is controlled by the CBCP, China Construction Bank, and Wang Zhang Blockchain, the investor in Prometheum, hold strategic cooperation agreements with each other and other Chinese entities. Why is nobody blowing this up? Why are these people not asking about this? We got this clip from Baba Cugs, who loves for me to call him a lightning rod, which he is. <laughs> um, he, he, in my area of the world, we call this a guy who doesn't give two you-know-whats, or S-words, as my now 11-year-old would say. No. We, uh, I think the, uh, I think, uh, like the Matt Damon crypto.com commercial said, um, the future is to the bold. <laughs> There's not many people more bold than Baba Cugs. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, listen to this clip. This is a great clip he's putting out here. People who hold that to align incentives. Um, institutional buyers who may buy XRP with a lockup, they have an aligned incentive with us and other people who hold XRP because the future value of XRP is very important to them. And that's, and we're able to use it that way. It's so now, why would the future be so important to them and why do they have their XRP locked up? My XRP is locked up. I'm ready for those institutions to pile right on in. Great clip. Then the, here's another great clip. This is Susan, Susan Friedman. Ask yourself this question. Is the digital asset that you hold, who's uh, one of their, who, where it has a company such as Ripple that's w working on a major use case for it, do they have, does your digital asset have a representative of a company working on a major use case for it on the Digital Pound Foundation's Twitter feed? I think not. Absolutely. So I am the head of policy at Ripple. And our goal is to advocate for policy frameworks globally that um, encourage the development of responsible ecosystems for crypto assets, including central bank digital currencies. Um, we are very excited about what's happening in the UK because London and the government generally has taken a very uh, forward-looking approach with respect to fintech, with respect to CBDCs in particular, I think as exemplified by the work that the Bank of England is doing on the digital pound, including with its engagement groups, um, engagement with industry, and really just taking into account um, all, all viewpoints when considering when and if and how to implement a digital pound. Ripple has an office in London. We're growing our footprint here and we're excited to be part of, you know, what we consider to be a really dynamic um, uh, environment with respect to crypto in general. I'm a digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button and tell your friends and family that Ripple is growing their presence in London. Is London ready? Thanks for listening.